Okay, so let's go now over the solution and how I go those numbers. The first thing you need to do is to calculate the opportunity cost of producing each good for each country. Let's begin with the U.S. What is the opportunity cost of producing an iPhone for the U.S.? Well, we know that it takes uh, four hours for the U.S. to produce an iPhone, and in that time they could produce uh, two Angry Birds because it takes them two hours to produce an Angry Birds. So if we divide you know, the resources to produce iPhones over the resources to produce Angry Birds, that gives you the opportunity cost of producing an iPhone, which is two Angry Birds. And again, that is how many Angry Birds the U.S. gives up every time they produce one iPhone. It takes them four hours to produce one iPhone, and in those four hours, they could have produced two Angry Birds if they had used those hours to produce Angry Birds instead. And we calculate the opportunity cost of Angry Birds in the same way. It takes them two hours to produce an Angry Bird. Uh, it takes them four hours to produce an iPhone. So the cost, the opportunity cost of producing one Angry Bird is half an iPhone. Again, in two hours, they could have in the two hours that it takes the US to produce an Angry Bird, they could have actually produced half an iPhone if they had used that hour to produce iPhone, to those two hours to produce an iPhone. So if we calculate the opportunity cost in that way for the U.S. and also for China, we come up with the following opportunity cost. For the U.S., it costs two Angry Birds to produce an iPhone, and it costs half an iPhone to produce an Angry Bird. And in China, it costs half an Angry Bird to produce an iPhone, and two iPhones to produce an Angry Bird. So if the country's trade based on this opportunity cost and not on the total or absolute opportunity cost, then China should produce the iPhones and US should produce the Angry Bird. So I, basically what I did is I calculated this opportunity cost first and I decided who was gonna produce what. Low cost producer in iPhone is China. China will produce most of the iPhones. The low cost producer of Angry Birds is US. So US will produce most of the Angry Birds. Now let's go back to the table and apply that. Now remember that what I wanna do is to come up with numbers that are Two higher than nine here, and two higher than nine here. At least two higher, and at least two higher here, so that I can actually uh, split the two, one for China, one for U.S., and I split the the two extra here, one for China, one for U.S., and they can consume at least one more of each. So, um, so I'll start basically with China. I say, well, I know China is gonna specialize on iPhones. So let's say that China specializes completely in iPhones and produces all iPhones and no Angry Birds. Now I have eight here. Now remember that the number I'm looking for is 11 because I want the two countries to produce 11 together, which is two more than nine. That way I can give one of the extra ones to China and one of the extra ones to the US. So the China end up consuming five and US end up consuming six. Now, if China is gonna specialize completely on iPhones and it has eight, I need three more in order to get to 11. So I need the US to produce at least three iPhones. And if U.S. produces three iPhones, they will, they, they will have enough hours to produce 14 Angry Birds left. So that means that if the U.S. produces 14 Angry Birds and China produces no Angry Birds, the world produces 14 Angry Birds. And notice that this is 12. This is two more than 12. And then the U.S., again, is going to produce three of the iPhones. And plus the eight that China produced, we have 11 iPhones. So notice that, again, uh, as I planned, uh, the world is actually now able to produce two more iPhones than before, 11 versus 9, and 14 more iPhone uh, Angry Birds than before. So it is clear that since uh, that as a world we're able to produce more because this country is specializing, clearly these countries are going to be able to consume more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, 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 the two more extra ones that the world produces now with trade, and I'm going to give one to the U.S. and one to China. All right, so the U.S. is actually going to produce, we probably were producing five, now it's going to produce six. China is going to produce, was producing four before, now it's going to, it's going to consume five. All right, that totals against 11. And I'm going to take the two extra one, the two extra Angry Birds that we produced. Now we're producing 14 instead of 12. I'm going to give one of them to uh, U.S., and U.S. was producing 10 before. Now I'm consuming 10, now they're going to consume 11. China was producing and consuming two Angry Birds before. I'm going to give them extra one. That's three. Again, there was a world. We are better off with 14 total by before. So now I can actually calculate what was the trade. I know how much they produce. I know how much they consume. So I can calculate how much they trade. So U.S. produced three iPhones. 
They end up consuming six, so they must have um, gotten three from China. And China produced eight iPhones, but they consume five because they give three to the U.S. Now, U.S. produced 14 Angry Birds. They end up consuming 11 because they give three to China. <clears throat> China doesn't produce any Angry Birds, but they consume three because they get three Angry Birds from the U.S. And that's how we got the answer that we got in class.